Hello, everybody. Welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. We're talking about the juggernaut B-words. I am excited about this because Madam Web is a movie. Never thought I'd live in this timeline. Oops. This is, of course, written by Roger Stern with art by a young, jazzy John Romita Jr. John Romita Jr. has not yet developed what he would cultivate as a style. This is more like he's approximating like more of a Gil Kane kind of look. It feels more like a classic Spider-Man book. Oh, um, yeah. It looks very similar to its predecessors when Denny O'Neill was writing it. That's right. Batman editor Denny O'Neill wrote a couple of Spider-Man stories, and in those stories he did one thing people remember, and that's invent Madam Web. Oh. That's it. Now, let's talk a little bit about Madam Web, because people are for the first time and last time ever in history. Madam Web is also known as Cassandra Web, two Bs, and she is a mutant. That's right. Eat it, Fox. Hmm. She is a mutant who has the special mutant ability that she can vaguely see the future, not unlike a charlatan fortune teller. And uh, in her first appearance, Spider-Man's Airheaded girlfriend, Deborah Whitman, wants to go see Madame Webb because she hears she's a clairvoyant. Peter Parker immediately admonishes her for wanting to go do that. Not that I begrudge anybody who wants to have a clearer view of what the future holds, but uh, there's a lot of theatricality involved with Madame Webb. She's got like a blindfold. She takes out personal ads in the paper about her services. And she even has a line in her origin story where she's like, you might know me as a soothsayer or a fortune teller or a psychic. And I'm like, yeah, right. That's her? Yeah. Jesus. She's a geriatric, completely paralyzed from the neck down. Her late husband invented a life support system that is coincidentally in the shape of a giant web. Why would it be shaped like that? That's just how it happened to be shaped. There's no, no, you don't- All the circuits and life support (laughs) systems that are required for her life-giving chair she sits in, yeah. All of those are in the shape of a web. No, you don't accidentally do that. You don't, especially if your name is Web. Yeah, no, you do that on purpose. Is that why she has the crazy dress thing? You know, the dress isn't really explained. It it is like a tail, which again, if she's a spider, what? I guess this is to be like web, like she's becoming web. It's like silk. It's the it's the sack that her poop fills in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, literally it must be, but also, I don't know. She looks like Aunt May. She does well because. She looks like an old woman, and everyone who draws that in Spider-Man comics is probably drawing Aunt May. Yep. But yeah, but she does look like Aunt May. She's gaunt, she has white hair. So yeah, Madame Web, uh, when she was first introduced, just kind of like this fun new psychic character that Danny O'Neill was like, that's kind of fun. She helps Spider-Man catch a kidnapper. And Pete gives her shit for being like, psychics aren't real. Well, she, he gives his girlfriend a hard time about wanting to go see her, and then ends up meeting her and they have this kind of like weird relationship where Madame Web knows that Peter Parker's Spider-Man because she's psychic of course, but the only way that she can communicate with him is by calling him on phones that are near him. Because back in the 80s, people didn't all have phones in their pockets. You had to be called. If you were going to be reached via phone, people had to know where you were going to be before you got there. Ah, much like, no doubt, the spider web. Uh, I suppose, yes, it's true. Sorry I'm not home right now. I'm walking in the spider Oh, the webs. No Doubt song. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Solid reference. You, you think, oh, well, surely she needs her fingers for that. No, a convenient machine like comes down from the web circuitry and then uh, I guess she uses her mind to dial? Okay. Mind dialing. You know, he'll be like swinging by and there'll be a dude on a payphone and he goes, hey, Spider-Man, come down here. It's There's, for you. It's for you. <laughs> He's like, what? And instead of just ignoring them, he'll come down there and be like, hello? And he'll be mad at Web being like, Spider-Man, you need to go to the water tower and stop the assassin. And he's like, okay. And then he goes. Maybe maybe it's like an early Siri. Yes. It's like Webby or something. Yeah. Just Madam Web. No, I meant like the the thing that helps her the, dial. Oh, the thing that helps her dial. Yeah, yeah. that's the that's Hey Webby. Yeah, it's dial early Spider Man. It's early webware. <laughs> Find Spider Man. Find Spider Man. But yeah. Oh man, Jane Jones and James Show would love to get his hands on that. That's right. As long as it took pictures as well. Yes. Uh, he doesn't believe that she's psychic, but he has a spider sense. <laughs> he has precognitive abilities. That's true. He's just like, you know what? You're a fraud. He doesn't consider that ESP. Spider-Man is like, I got bit by a spider. 
Right. How There's many it. people are going to be bit by a radioactive spider or like yeah, it's just there's so many people who claim to be psychic. Right. They all didn't. Not get, everyone claims to be Spider Man. Well, I mean, like not everybody. Like they didn't all get powers. It's true. You know. Yeah. No, I. I he doesn't think. Maybe he's it's offended by the the. Is she going with the spider person persona at that no, point? No, he doesn't really. Yes, uh, she's. I mean, the yeah, whole so, the so whole maybe theatrical she's, look. Maybe he's offended. No, he's he's like, how dare you? He's offended because oh, is, he, is she appropriating his culture? Right. He, he's just. Offended because she claims to be a psychic, and he thinks that that's like chicanery. Uh, does he know Professor Charles Xavier? He uses his psychic abilities to quietly and clandestinely find other mutants. He doesn't take one ads out in the bugle, going like, "Yo, I'm psychic. If you want to get your fortune read, come on down to Gray Malkin Ave." Look, not everyone is his. You know, she doesn't have as many resources as Charles Xavier. Is what you're saying? Sure, because <laughs> Chuck is also rich. I and mean. Madame Webb lives in like a really divey apartment. You know, in, like, the, the difference is that she is supposed to be like a, a prognosticator of the future. That so is, she's more like destiny. She is. She is absolutely that. And she's blind and the, <laughs> the, that whole, she has like visuals and images that come into her head. Anyway. Yeah, Charles is just telepathic. That's true. He could just read your mind. He doesn't know the future. He can guess what you're about to do based on what you're thinking. He can, he can also tell you what you did do and embarrass the hell out of you. That's very true. Oh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's what you're doing? Like a man diaper, you say. <laughs> Those are no longer boxer briefs. We've already introduced her. She's had two other stories and adventures in which she calls Peter on the phone and vaguely helps him out. Is this one of the things that like fans embraced when it happened? Or were they like, what is happening in my Spider-Man comics? I want to think that like most fans just took it in stride. Fans took a lot of things in stride when they were just introduced. Because a lot of things were just introduced. They didn't do all the fanfare. You know, today's Marvel would have put out like a really poorly made photoshopped teaser that they would release on the, on on, uh, on social media. Mm. That being like, the next big spider sensation is crawling its way into your hearts and minds. Like, but in, back then they were like, I don't know, uh, Madam Web? Like, in the same breath as introducing Madam Web, they also thought, hey, Sandman and Hydro Man have never teamed up to become Mud Man. Let's do that! Like, okay. They would be mud men. Yes. They're yeah, still but two separate people. It, it, you should see it. We'll maybe we'll do it one day. But and, and fans are just like, yeah, all right. I mean, you just introduced Madam Web. Why not Mud Man? Let's go. Will o' the Wisp, the Big Wheel, Rocket Racer. <laughs> all right, keep them coming. Alien sure. costume. I'm down. Madam Web. She's in a handful of stories. You know, she was in two adventures previously. She's in this. And then we don't see her for a while. And ultimately, at the end of the day, they murder her unceremoniously. Actually, in quite a ceremony, but without any reverence. Please tell me there's a giant meeting at the Bugle and a big newspaper crushes her. Oh, that'd be amazing, yes. <laughs> now, she's, uh, her throat is slit by one of Craven's family members. But, Jesus. Uh, I know. But that's all so she can get out of the goddamn way so that a hot new spider person can become Madam Web. And that's, that's, of course, Julia Carpenter because we have already too many spider women. And so let's make one of the spares into Madam Web, get rid of the old busted one, and, and I wanna believe that this is not the case, but I can't help myself because we live in this timeline. They were probably like, Madam Web is a mutant, let's get rid of her so we don't have to focus on mutants right now. Uh, she also did skirt by the No More Mutants Scarlet Witch whammy. Uh, so she was one of the few mutants that were spared from decimation, and I was like, oh, thank God. No more mutants! Except for Madam Web, she's oh, awesome. So it said, Ma what about Madam Web? Who? <laughs> it's, yeah, she didn't pick Madam Web because she didn't even know she existed. <laughs> you, you mean that fortune teller in the bugle? That sucks. Like, isn't she <laughs> a spider person? Right, isn't she a thing? And then later they'll tie it in where it's like, no, she's actually connected to the web of life and destiny, and blah, 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 and it's like, oh my God. So yeah, because of Scarlet Witch. She changed her. Oh, that, 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 that's not a bad retcon, honestly. So the movie, has Madame Web in it. Yeah. Is it this Madame Web? In the Madame Web movie, there is Cassandra Web, but she's Dakota Johnson. So, so she's not. We're just throwing out the old person version. Cool, okay. I mean, why would I have old people in my movie? That's not young and hot. That's right. Ew. That's right. But uh, the version everyone knows is the 1994 animated series Madame Web. Who looks like this one. Who looks like this one, who was also voiced by Joan Lee, Stan Lee's wife. Oh. It's great. She's she's frustrating and annoying and 100% accurate. It's amazing. Uh, not that I'm like really looking for authenticity in my 
Madam Web depictions, but uh, I digress. Forget about Madam Web now, because that doesn't really matter. She's a plot device in the story. So the story opens with a horrible, dreamlike prognostication that Madam Web is having, in which she is being tormented by a coming bull-like demon. Obviously, these are allegories for the characters we're going to see in the story. Nah, there are intro. essentially two. That'd be great. Yeah, before he joined Doctor Strange, he moonlighted as a tormenting dreamwalker. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say moonlight? I sure did. So Madam Web is attacked by this monster. Uh, spider. Clearly Spider-Man is trying to defend her, but ultimately she dies. Madam Web is like... All right, well, I don't want to die, so I guess I'll call Peter Parker and have him save me. So she does. Uh, Spider-Man, in the That's meantime... That's the wrong person to call. He was in your dream, and he didn't save you. That's true. Well, that's funny, because they do try and reach other people, but not immediately. I think she's like, I need to set the defender on the path. Like, I got to get that guy involved. She also knows Peter Parker's phone number. Of course, she could see the future. She should know everybody's phone number. <laughs> yeah, but she knows Peter Parker's phone number because he just calls random numbers where he's going to be. That's true. The reality is, the reason why she calls Peter Parker is because she's a Spider-Man character. She's not going to call anybody else because she didn't know their numbers. And because she would never call them because no one else would think to use her. You know, Spider-Man's like, oh, we're going to use Juggernaut because he's cool and interesting and he's never met Peter Parker or Spider-Man before. But no one's going to be like, oh, man. You know, the X office isn't going to go, D yo, you know, we, we should do a character exchange. You guys use Juggernaut? We can use Madam Web, right? I mean, she is a mutant after all. No one is looking to jump on the Madam Web train. So Peter has fallen asleep reading a book. He's a grad student, uh, and he is woken up by a phone call, and uh, he answers the phone, and Madam Web is like, hey, Spider-Man, it's me. And he's like, ah, oh, jeez. She's like, listen, I know I'm going to be attacked and maybe killed and I need you to be ready to save me and I don't know when it's gonna be or where but just just hang out and wait for my call bye and he's like awesome yeah. I wonder how much sleep I could get and then he looks at the clock and it's 8 30 in the morning he's like oh, it's gonna be one of those days <laughs> like so I fell asleep in my chair reading for school and I woke up oh no <laughs> and I just have to get up now yeah, now I'm just up you know I was going to ask a question earlier and I realized now it was a really stupid question is it I mean I don't know I already saw my answer though ah what is it um because I was just like well we have the juggernaut is Black Tom Cassidy gonna be in this? <laughs> this is the year for us talking about Juggernaut <laughs> and Black Tom Cassidy because of course, perfect. Black Tom Cassidy is there. So Black Tom Cassidy has a scheme. He is driving a yacht that is carrying both him and Juggernaut to the New York Harbor. Black Tom has caught wind of Madame Web being a mutant and being psychic. Lord knows how. Literally no one else has heard of her, but... It was his magic shillelagh. Uh, sure, the wood spoke to him, but he was like, I want Madam Web in my employ. Juggy, I want you to go get her. And so he's like, all right, me. fine. He calls him Boyo. <laughs> well, he calls everyone that because he's so Irish. She's a psychic. Boyo foretells the future. <laughs> We strive for authenticity here in our Marvel comics, especially in the 80s. But, uh, <laughs> so Black Tom, six Juggernaut on her. And uh, Juggernaut is stupid and hilarious. Like, he, he's like, he, when he goes to meet with Black Tom on the boat, he just walks through the door. The door explodes, and Black Tom's like, thanks. It looks like he walks through a staircase. He actually, no, he climbs a staircase and oh. destroys it on his way up. And Black Tom's like, hey, please don't. Like, we use this ship to get around. You know, I'm going to rouse suspicion if I have everything repaired and you blindly show back up when you've kidnapped a helpless old woman and brought her back to our ship. But he's like, all right, we're going to be in the dock in a few minutes. And Juggernaut's like, no time for that. Walks right off the bow, lands on the bottom of the harbor, and then just walks towards the mainland. Well, and it's then, like, you doesn't he still need to breathe? No, he doesn't. He has a special force field that protects him from any harm externally. Though that's also- That's not harm, like that's not a harm. Like oxygen not getting to you is not- Don't forget, how is he powered? I know how he's powered, I know it's magic. Yes, the magical crystal of Cytorak. Yeah, I know, but- That creates a force field. The force field can generate oxygen or whatever. It's magic, we don't have to explain it. No, I ask you to. Well, I'm Joe Quesada and I say the nay. Damn it. <laughs> of course, I'm not well, even here. But... Also, wouldn't he not um, be faster than this boat? No, it takes him longer. Like... Now, the boat lands way before Juggernaut arrives, but it allows for Madame Webb to get the vision of a antagonist emerging from the ocean. 
Madam Webb knows now that her assailant is coming for her from the sea. And so Pete goes At least to, under it. Exactly. So Pete goes to the Daily Bugle. He bumps into a bunch of characters that were popular at the time. And when I say popular, I mean used. Uh, that includes Glory Grant. Glory Grant is a fun black character in the Spider-Man mythology who is J. Jonah Jameson's personal secretary, assistant, kind of. She's an administrative assistant, let's say. And uh, she takes no guff and puts up with none of J. Jonah Jameson's uh, sass. Good and uh, she's great. I love her. Uh, meanwhile, Betty Brandt has married Ned Leeds, who was a reporter for the Bugle and will inevitably be accused of being the Hobgoblin and indeed will be considered the Hobgoblin until Roger Stern retcons that out, which was, of course, part of the original retcon anyway, because, of course, Roger Stern intended for uh, Hobgoblin to be somebody else. But we'll get into that story in another time. All that matters is Betty Brandt has now returned uh, and she had a row with Peter about uh, her marriage, and now they're back and they've buried the hatchet and Betty needs a job, and so she has become Robbie Robertson's administrative assistant. And so uh, this, this is all the back matter for this story. Here you go, enjoy. Uh, are, are Peter and Glory ever a thing? They are not ever a thing, but it's always teased. Mm -mm. Like, but she and Peter would have never worked out. She'd been like... Well, he, Peter would have been like, I gotta go! And she'd been like, off you go. Nope. No, there's a moment where Peter like runs off, she's like, Hate to watch you go, but love to watch you leave. Like, <laughs> oh, she's great. She's great. I love Glory. She's not used to any significant effect uh, that she should have been, but uh, she's a fun addition. Okay, so like annuals and specials and backup stories, like they will do occasionally like check-ins, like continuity check-ins where they're like, here's where we are in Spider-Man right now. A lot of characters we got to deal with. Here's, so, here's someone you haven't seen in a while. What are they up to? No, 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 not that. It, Peter will be thinking and they'll be like, man, I sure have met a lot of amazing women in my time. And then we'll see like each of the women that has been and are currently important in his life and he will describe them so that you the reader can be caught up on Peter's love life. And Gloria Grant for a long time was always in the montage but she was always referred to as like, me and Glory never really got together but she is a really cool person. <laughs> Something like that. I'm right. like, so that, that's how I've always interpreted Glory. It's just like, thank God, by the way. Good for Glory. Because it means that she never turned into a goblin or died or at the very least was disrespected by Peter's antics. So good for Glory. Yeah, but that means she never got to have a wheat cake. That's true. And she would like them. They're good. Anyway, uh, so Glory gets a call and she answers it. And she's like, oh, it's for Peter. And Peter's like, hello. And... Madam Webb's on the other line, and she's like, "He's coming! It's, it's he's coming out of the ocean! You gotta what? You gotta come to my place right now!" And Pete's like, "Okay, mm, he's coming out of the ocean. Well, it could be Namor. I fought him a couple of times in previous stories. Man, Namor, he's a tough one. I hope it's not Namor because he is powerful. That would that would be a really tough fight. Yeah, he's incredibly strong. He calls him Subby. Well, he's he's referred to as the Submariner. Submariner. So yes, I know. yes, Subby's gonna come and get me. Yeah." <laughs> Really weird. I know. So Juggernaut, of course, emerges, and Juggernaut's like just making a beeline for uh, Madame Web, and so nothing stops the Juggernaut, as the title implies. So like he just walks into trees or traffic or walls. He's just like it's. I don't this know. This is the fastest way. This is the fast way. It's a straight line this way. <laughs> so he just. Some goes. say as the crow flies, others say as the Juggernaut walks. That's right. So Pete eventually discovers the uh, wanton destruction that Juggernaut has left in his path and uh, follows it until he reaches Juggernaut and he's like, who is this big brown dude? <laughs> he has not met him? No, he's never even heard of him. And I'm like, the wow. Juggernaut was invented in like 1967. You mean to tell me that in almost 20 years they've never, yeah. And here it is. This is, I should warn you, one of the top celebrated Spider-Man stories of all time. What? Yeah, that's right. In our Madam Web tie-in episode, we are talking about Nothing Stops the Juggernaut, one of fans' favorite Peter Parker Spider-Man stories. Really? Because Spider-Man doesn't know who Juggernaut is. Okay. And uh, inevitably, he does discover he's an X-Men villain, but uh, that, that really doesn't matter for the purpose of the story. So when Spidey sees Juggernaut, he immediately is like, all right, well, there he is. I guess I'll just knock him over. So he just launches himself at Juggernaut and just bounces off of him. And he's like, holy crap. Okay. So then he tries to web him, but the web is blocked by a force field. And I'm like, all right, 
So what's up with the force field? No. Because like Spider-Man can make physical contact if he throws his body at Juggernaut. But if he wants to web Juggernaut, the force field suddenly is kicked in. Well, you see, the force field knows that it would be sticky. I, yeah, right? And that suit's really hard to clean. Yeah, or at the very least, he doesn't want to be f covered in it. And so the force field protects him. I'm like, well, why is it so selective? Why isn't the force field the thing that blocks Spider-Man from hitting him? Why can Spider-Man make physical contact, but the force field doesn't let him... And it's just, it's magic, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It chooses. Yeah. No, the, 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 the crystal knows. Maybe it knew, he's like, well, this this guy is not going to knock him down, so I don't have to worry about that. But the webs might slow me down. Right, but Juggy doesn't even know that Spider-Man's there. I didn't say he, I said the crystal. Right, okay, so the crystal is acting for Juggernaut. Uh -huh. It is yeah. a sentient entity. It's like the crystal knows that air particles Dude, that'd still be have to messed, move through the force field so he can breathe. That'd be messed up. If, if the like, crystal was alive? Yeah, and like it's never been the Juggernaut, it's been the crystal. Yeah, I kind of love that. Or, well, Colossus has gotten the crystal as well, and mm. he's become the juggernaut. But I like the idea that, like, the crystal kind of, like, takes over. Like, a, like almost like the black suit. Yeah. Where it's just like... The crystal wears you. Yeah. Yeah. The crystal's like, thank you. Now I can eat. And do what I want to do. Right, and go. <laughs> to the bathroom. <laughs> the force still takes care of that. <laughs> well, it's got to eat. It's got to poop, too. Yeah. So this is the story. The story is the juggernaut is going in one direction towards a helpless old woman... And Spider-Man is the only one who can stop him. And uh, Cell, nothing can stop the Juggernaut. And that's right. That's and that's the the conflict. The conflict is Spider-Man trying to stop uh, an unstoppable, unstoppable force. Unstoppable force. Yeah. It's that kind of story. Spider-Man's like, all right, well, the webs didn't touch him, but maybe the webs can stop him because my webs are really strong. So he creates like a wall of webbing in Juggernaut's path. Juggernaut just walks into it, and while the webbing holds the buildings it's stuck to don't and so they give way and then eventually he rips through oh those poor people yeah oh no there's a lot of collateral damage <laughs> in this dealing like for example uh okay so the webs didn't hold well maybe i can make him fall into a hole and then he'll be in the hole long enough for like police to come and arrest him even though how the hell are they going to stop him so he just goes you know a couple of blocks ahead of juggernaut and then just rips a hole in the ground how does he know there isn't a subway shaft because there's already a hole there he just makes it bigger and so juggernaut's like that, what well, you... that doesn't mean that there's not a subway running under there yeah, yeah so, there are plenty of holes in new york that's true we didn't think anybody would notice juggernaut's like what are you doing man like i love him just walking and being like what are you doing man what what are you what are you trying to do are you making a hole because i'm just gonna fall into the hole and then come out and then he falls into the hole <laughs> and pete's like well that'll, that'll do it and then juggernaut just like rips everything down climbing out of the hole like, he just walks out and pete's like okay i mean at least that happens it's not like oh i'm unstoppable and he just starts walking up the wall right no he just climbs out of it and Spidey's like, oh my god, this is, okay. I'm kind of losing control of the situation here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he leaps in front of him and talks to him. And Would you like this? Oh, sure. So he's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just jump on you. So he does his, like, spectacular uh, spider agility and strength and just, like, jump. There's this great sequence of him just trying to stop him and grabbing, like, every appendage. And he, can't, and he just can't keep him uh, from moving. And uh, eventually, Juggernaut's like, all right. So he just grabs Spider-Man while he's trying to grab him, and he's like, hey, let go! And Juggernaut just walks through a building. Like, that'll get you off me. Like, Pete's like, oh, God, no! It just, it, it just, the, the building gives way from Juggernaut, but Spider-Man is a man of flesh and blood on this back, so he just gets peeled off eventually. I just like, oh, no! Oh, no! Kroom! <laughs> Juggernaut on the other side goes, oh, yeah! <laughs> He, he, he should have yelled his old thing. Oh, yes. Nuts! <laughs> That'd be amazing. This building has been destroyed, and Pete's in the middle of the wreckage, and he's just, just like... Just the ground floor. Just the, the rest of it's fine. It's true. But he's just like, oh, my God. And everyone's just like, what happened? Meanwhile, the phone rings, and Pete's like, could you answer that, please? My head's ringing enough as it is. And one of the dudes at this law office is like, hello? Oh, Spider-Man, it's for you. And Madam Web's like, all right, so does the word Cytorac mean anything to you? And he's like... Yes, Doctor Strange has said that word before. I will find Steve and he will help me. Yeah, let's get Steve in this book. He's like, by the way, Madam Web, I can't stop him. So you may want to call the Fantastic Four or the Avengers for the love of God. <laughs> Goodbye. Hangs up and he makes his way to 
the She's like, Sanctum Sanctorum. I don't have their numbers. No, but she uses her psychic abilities <laughs> to find out yeah. that both the Fantastic Four and the Avengers are not available. They never are. Never when Spider-Man needs them. Like, they're just never around. Like, what are you doing? I know. So Spidey ends up at the Sanctum, and uh, he knocks on the window, and Wong is like, oh, hey, Spider-Man, what, what's going on? He's like, hey, is the doc home? And he's like, no. That one's, like, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. Maybe Steve. you could help me, Wong? He's like, have you ever heard about the Juggernaut? And Wong's like, oh, he's like an X-Men villain, yeah. And he's like, cool. Okay. Do you know if he might have any, like, weak points? <laughs> And Wong's like, I wouldn't know. Uh, I, I'm a Doctor Strange character. I don't know anything about these X-Men guys. Oh, excuse me, the phone's ringing. And Spider-Man's like, it's fine, it's for me. <laughs> and so he answers it. He's just, she's just like, hey. It, it'd be great if it was Doctor Strange being like, what are you doing in my house? Get out of my house. Who would let you in? Put Wong on the phone right now. <laughs> Wong, when I leave, it is not the time to throw parties. <laughs> don't let Spider-Man in. He's a hooligan. He's he smells, sticky. He smells like rooftops. <laughs> and pizza. <laughs> so uh, he answers the phone. He's like, hey, the X-Men. She goes, nope, I use my psychic abilities. The X-Men are also not available. All <laughs> of them? Yeah. There's like a, there's a bunch of them. And he's like, nuts. <laughs> he doesn't say it, but he might as well. But uh, he's, he, I love he refers to her from now on as MW. He's like, All right, MW. Don't panic. I'll be on my way. So he just throws himself out the window and chases after him. He doesn't bother to mention Ciderac. That's the reason you came here was because the word Ciderac came Ciderac out. Ciderac is supposed to lead him to Doctor Strange. I know, but- Wong doesn't have magic powers. I know he doesn't have magic powers, but it doesn't mean he doesn't have some knowledge. So like, maybe he should have said, like Spider-Man, honey, yeah. come on. Well, yeah, nothing. Okay. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know. I mean, he did just get hit by a wall, essentially. <laughs> He's so. not really thinking clearly. <laughs> But, he uh, was hit by a wall like five blocks ago. He's fine. <laughs> but I wonder if the crimson bands of Ciderac would stop him or strengthen him. It depends on how they want to write it or if there's a <laughs> precedence for it yeah. or if there's some way that it's like Doctor Strange would be like, oh, well, you see, I used this loophole within the, the band's you know, spell in order to bind the juggernaut. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Nothing can stop him except the power that powers him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Onslaught. Well, nothing can stop him, so I just put him on an infinite treadmill. There we go. So, meanwhile, there's a police barricade a couple blocks away from Juggernaut. Uh, Juggernaut just walks through it. You know, there's I mean, massive it's artillery. Like, that's not really impressive compared to what we've already seen. Maybe the guns shooting him. But, like, him walking through a barricade, I'm like, that's... Like wood. I know. Well, like, yeah, he that's pulled, more for them he, than he it is him. He went a building. I but don't know. Uh, but we see like they have sandbags and like heavy guns and they're just firing everything they can at Juggernaut. He just walks right through it. Ends up at Madame Webb's apartment. He's like, huh, this place sucks. Like what a crappy apartment. I love it if while he was tearing through the cops, he's just like, excuse me, pardon me. Right. Oh, he doesn't say anything. He's just like, Pfft. like it's nothing. Just you don't like, regard. Come on, move. Yeah. Where is Tom? And Tom's on the ship going like, whoo hoo hoo hoo. I'm sorry, what? He's probably river dancing in there or something. You know, whatever. That's my impression of a leprechaun, so I assume that's what he's doing. Oh, okay. Just, I love it. He's just step dancing in there. So, Juggernaut bursts through the door of the main foyer of the apartment complex and sees that, like, the, the stairwell is webbed closed, and he's like, Spider-Man again. All right. All they have to do yes. is put her in a place where his weight will just crush anything trying to get to them. Yeah. The problem is, Madam Web can't move. If she leaves her chair, she'll die. The life support system is made specifically for her by her dead husband. This thing is her, basically. And if she's separated from it, she'll die. They can't just like move her away. <sighs> what so, happens if their uh, rent goes up? What if there's a fire? I mean, she'll know it's coming before it happens. Spider-Man sprays the front doorway with webs and then uses part of the like local generator that powers her insane life support systems to run an electrical current through the web so that maybe it'll fry Juggernaut as he tries to walk through it. I'm sorry, that's a thing? He can do that? Sure. I thought his webs were insulating. They, they can be. Spider-Man can change the density or viscosity of his webs from a simple turn of the web shooters. You know, that's how he can get a spray or a thin line or goop. Obviously that doesn't stop the Juggernaut because nothing does. And uh, you know, it's pretty spectacular. You know, So he the book lives up to its title Nothing can stop the Juggernaut. Yeah, I mean, the book tells you how it's gonna end before it starts. <laughs> you know, Juggernaut just walks through, he's like, that's enough, thank you. And 
Madam Web is just like, oh no, what's happening in my dream? I'm going to die! And Spider-Man's like, all right. He just throws himself at Juggernaut. Juggernaut like caves in a wall and it collapses on Spider-Man. And Juggernaut's like, okay lady, there's a lot of nuisance in my way to get to you, but like, I'm not going to kill you. You just have to come with me. So he picks her up and she's like, ah! What are you doing? Like, why are you freaking out? And Pete's like, she, she's going into convulsions. The chair keeps her alive. And he's like, oh, well then she's useless. And he just drops her and he goes, well, what a waste of a day. And he just leaves. The Spider-Man like falls <laughs> over to her and he tries to resuscitate her. And then, you know, the police show up because they've been following Juggernaut's wreckage. And uh, they eventually like put her on a gurney and they get her out of there and they put her on life support and try to keep her alive. And they're like, what is happening? What is she wearing? What? I have a lot of questions. And they'll have to wait. So Juggernaut just could he could have taken her. Oh yeah, but he didn't. He's well, just he's like, like well, oh, she'll die. Well then, forever. well, I guess I better go back and ask Tom what he wants. That's exactly right. Well, because he's like, I can't take the chair and all this stuff. And like, I mean, it, you could. If I did, it'd just break. It's a very long cord. So he's like, eh. Spider-Man is so appalled by his wanton uh, disregard for human life that he's like. So, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess this guy up. <laughs> like I gotta stop him. I gotta stop the Juggernaut, even though I know that nothing stops the Juggernaut. So uh, he resigns himself to facing the Juggernaut. To stopping the Juggernaut. That's right. Um, Man, what a what a front page. Yeah. That's. I like that image. It's just you know, little Spider-Man against the the giant image of the Juggernaut. So Juggernaut's on his way back to Black Tom in the same friggin' direction he came in. He's like, I had a bad day. Man, I, well, I walked all the way here, and now I gotta walk all the way back. What a mm. bunch of crap. And he's like, what a waste of my time. He's even thinking to himself, like, I come all the way to grab an old woman, and then it turns out if I move her, she, I, she dies. Man, I can't believe that Black Tom didn't know that. Well, I wish he'd done his research before he sent me off on these wild goose chases. And so, Black Tom just needed 10 minutes alone. Yeah. Why don't you get me an old woman? <laughs> Go get me that fortune teller I saw in the newspaper from this morning. So uh, Spider-Man's like, all right, well, I can't stop him like myself. He's not, you know, I'm, I'm not strong enough, but maybe I can like hit him with a steel girder from this construction site. So he makes like a web sling and he fires it at Juggernaut. Juggernaut just catches it. Does he have a spider sense? No, he just sees it coming. He's like, oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> and he crumples it up and then he sees where Spider-Man is and he goes into the, and it's a derelict building that's gonna be scheduled for destruction. And it, it actually, uh, I know that sounds convenient because that's always happening in one of these big uh, slugfests, but Juggernaut even remarks on like what a crappy city New York is. He's like, they're, if they're not building another building, they're knocking another one down. Like, is this city ever gonna be done? <laughs> I, you know what, this is, he's doing something good though. That's true. You know, he's really helping them out. Yeah. Oh, except for probably releasing all the asbestos. Oh yeah, in big that time. It's 82, it's loaded with them. Oh, it riddled. <laughs> so he collapses the building Spider-Man's on, Spider-Man like swings out of the way. He grabs a wrecking ball that's meant for knocking down these buildings and just whips it at Juggernaut at high speeds. Uh, Juggernaut just punches it and it bounces off of him. And it... Spider-Man, take the L, okay? <laughs> no, that's the thing, it's like Spider-Man does not like, the... L. He's like, no! So Juggy like launches that wrecking ball inadvertently into another building which collapses it on Spider-Man and Juggernaut. Like the two of them are just enveloped in. Yeah, and Juggernaut's fine because he's the Juggernaut. Yes, but Spider-Man doesn't know that. He doesn't know this guy's reputation. So he's just like. You, you've seen an, his reputation all day. It was an entire building that just collapsed on him. He's like, well, that was rough for me, but I'll bet Juggernaut probably didn't walk away from this either. Yeah, and well, the, thank God it was an empty building. Yes, and everyone's like, Spider-Man, did you see that guy leave? And he's like, Oh my God, he's already gone? <laughs> Good Lord. So he leaps off, swings away. Uh, but the one thing that the Juggernaut is not impenetrable to is insults. That's right. All he needs to do is just make fun of him. And then he'll be like, woo hoo hoo And then he runs into the ocean. While that's happening, um, there, okay, so there's a subplot in the Peter Parker stories where you know, Spider-Man is a freelance photographer for the Daily Bugle. He takes pictures of Spider-Man, but there's another photographer now named Lance Bannon. And Lance Bannon is a better photographer because he doesn't just set the camera down and let things happen in front of oh, a like lens he accidentally. Oh, he shots? Yes, he actually knows how to take pictures. But we're meant to hate him because he's horning it on Peter's territory. And he's, he's also a womanizer and a jerk anyway, so it's okay, oh, okay. to hate him. But uh, Lance Bannon is eating Spider-Man's lunch. And uh, so while that's happening, um, you know, there's this massive 
citywide battle between Juggernaut and Spider-Man. The Bugle wants pictures. They send Lance Bannon to go look for them. And Lance Bannon is crushed to death. <laughs> and he dies. That's the end of it. No, he's... Uh, so nice. Nuts. So Lance <laughs> Bannon goes off to uh, get photos. Meanwhile, we actually check in with Black Tom. He's like, where the hell is Juggernaut? Like, why is it taking him so long? And checks his uh, binoculars, and he's like, what the crap is happening? Like, he sees, like, all this smoke and destruction. He's like, I... Like, I every I, time, every time I send him on something. That's right. He's, it's never just subtle. You never just go someplace and do the work. You You're to, like, destroy hanging everything. out with the Juggernaut. I'm sorry, this is, like, bothering the crap out of me. You're working with the Juggernaut. I know, I know, but he's... Well, I would be annoyed. Even if I knew what it was like to work with Juggernaut. It's just like... I would still be like, could you... I mean, like, we've been doing this for a long time. You know, why do we always have to do it your way? That's like Sal working with me and Ben sometimes. I, we, can we just do the book, please? No, we're going to dance. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what I asked for. And uh, so he lands on this gas truck, like a truck that's hauling gasoline. And uh, he's like, oh, I'll just refloat. Ah, oh, crap, I'm out of web, like I am out of web fluid. I, I can't web anymore, oh, I used it all up. It's gonna make getting home real hard. It really is, I'll just have to jump, what a pain in the ass, or ride the subway. While he's remarking on losing web fluid, the truck driver who is parked, jumps out of the truck, and he's like, hey, get the hell off my car! <laughs> Spider-Man's like, oh my god, you jackass, man! I'm having a day! And he takes away from him, and he crumples it into a pretzel, and he's like, here, you jackass. I needed that to change my tires. Well, you shouldn't have brandished it at me. <laughs> so, I'm Spider- you know who I am. Exactly, so he runs away, and Spider-Man's like, hey, that's a gasoline truck. All right, here we go. They say nothing can stop the Juggernaut, but nothing cannot burn yes. the Juggernaut. Yes, but something can burn the Juggernaut. And Roxxon couldn't afford this. That's right. So Juggernaut's making his way. He's he's through an industrial complex thing. Oh, he's making so his way downtown. He's making his way downtown. He hears a truck horn, like honk honk, and he's like, what the hell? Turns around, Spider-Man is driving the truck at him. He even is pulling <laughs> the horn. Okay. If you're riding a tractor trailer, you're gonna pull the horn. You're gonna pull the horn. You gotta. I would. And he's just like, all right, and he's wedged the gas pedal. He's like, all right, here we go. And just drives the truck into Juggernaut. There's no way that Spider-Man's spider sense is not just screaming at him right now. Oh yeah, now. no, but that's not gonna stop him from pulling that horn. <laughs> so, but the image of, of Juggernaut just being like, this won't hurt me. Nothing can. It's like, I think Juggernaut is trying to convince himself that it won't. Mm. <laughs> He's just like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Right? Kaboom. My crystal won't let me down now. And the truck explodes on Juggernaut, and it's like this massive explosion that even Black <laughs> Tom Cassidy can see from his yacht. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Faith and Megora! <laughs> Spider-Man, thankfully, like, leapt out of the way and hid behind some metal or something, and he was just like, man, like, that, that could have killed me. Like, if I was a second too late, I could have died too. And I'm like, are you are you trying to kill the Juggernaut? <laughs> I just want to stop him. Whether that be a forever stop or a for now stop, I don't care as right. long as he stops. But uh, the visual of Juggernaut emerging while on fire is just great. Like Juggernaut is on fire, and he's, he's just still on walking. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> so Juggernaut's like, I don't want to be on fire anymore. It's kind of annoying. It's like in my vision. So he just knocks over a fire hydrant and just gets sprayed with water. Plus, I just smell like gas. It's true, yeah. Well, I, I think I, I see where this might be going. Oh, do you? Uh, if if this panel down here has any visual cues. You mean this convenient location where some cement has been poured recently? <laughs> Spider-Man's like, all right, well, maybe your helmet that, that has holes in it. So he jumps on it and he grabs on it. And Juggernaut's like, oh, you finally figured out that my weak point is my helmet. Well, that is what the X-Men normally do, which is why off panel, before this story happened, I like laser welded it to my outfit so it'll never come off again. Ew. So Spider-Man is just on him trying to pull it off and he's like, all right, well, I guess just peel you off of me by walking through another building. And Pete's like, no, <laughs> no more. So he covers his eyes and Dugnaut's like, hey, like, you did, did quit cheating, that's not fair, I can't see. And uh, this is where we see, like, Spider-Man's resilience against Juggernaut. Like, Juggernaut like, grabs at him and tries to, like, peel him off of him with his 
fingertips. And, uh, and he's like, okay, if I can't get you off of me with your stickiness, then I'll just pound you. So he's just punching at Peter. He's just like trying to crush him. And Spider-Man's like, this seems to be working. Because you know, he's walking as he's punching. Yeah, but you're like you're getting pummeled. Oh yeah, no, he's just taking it. While Spider-Man is taking this beating, uh, Juggernaut realizes that his legs are stuck. Oh, I thought this was. Gonna, I thought Peter was gonna have to. What? Like fill? I thought he was gonna fall in a hole, and Peter was gonna fill the hole with cement. No, no, they walked into a cement platform. Okay, okay. And Juggernaut just starts sinking. Way better. And. So he leaps off Juggernaut and he's like, oh, pfft, cement, come on. And Pete's like, yeah, this is a skyscraper foundation. They're 40 feet deep. So long. And Juggernaut's like, I, you're, I can't be stopped. I'll be fine. Once I reach the bottom. And so he just sinks into the concrete. Again, 40 feet So when below. he comes out of there, that, like, if that building has been built up on top of it, they're screwed. Yeah, they actually do explain how he eventually gets out of it because, of course, this is not the last Juggernaut story. Uh, Spider-Man realizes, like, he hears this weird noise and he's like, oh, he realizes that his camera has been running the entire time. Like, it must have been hit while he was fighting Juggernaut. Uh -huh. And so it's been taking pictures, like, through his costume. Of what? Of the fight. Like, of everything going on. Oh, thank God. I thought it was just turned around, so it was getting pictures of his abs. Yeah, or his navel. Yeah, but it wouldn't be like, you wouldn't be able to see Spider-Man in them. No, but you could see, like, the explosion that happens, oh, or Juggernaut, yeah. like, battling Spider-Man. Like, it's at through him. his clothes. If I try and take a picture through my shirt, mm -hmm. it's not going to come out. The way they explain it, they just go, like, there's a kind of filter over it. Like, I guess that's implied that his suit is really, really thin. Okay. Like, he accidentally ends up beating out Lance Bannon, who couldn't get near the fight because there were police barricades surrounding the entire area. And so Spider-Man accidentally gets the photos he needs and he gets some money. Suck it, Lance. That's right. Uh, they do another story called Something Can Stop the Juggernaut, also written by Roger Stern, which explains that like one of the most traumatic experiences of Juggernaut's life was this. Well, yeah, because he was alone with his thoughts for a few that's minutes. That's right. He had like 20 and minutes with his thoughts. And so, you As this channel has um, proved, that's the worst thing that uh, could happen to him. It, it could cause complete madness. Oh, yeah. The force field still allows him to breathe and stuff, but he was enveloped in concrete. Like, he had the sensation of suffocating and being, like, just entombed. Well, also, like, that's going to smell after a while. Mm. So he's just, he, he had a horrible time. Yeah, what if there. he farts down there? That's right. He's just stuck with that fart. Yeah. How does he eat or drink? He doesn't need to. Okay, what about defecating? Right, I guess he doesn't need to. I assume the, the crystal converts any so waste. So then why would he have to fart, is what I'm saying. Right, maybe he likes to. He likes Superman. <laughs> what? Superman doesn't need to eat in the Superman movie. Oh. He says, I don't have to eat, but I like to. You know, So it's like, Juggernaut doesn't have to saying, fart, but he likes to. I thought you were like saying Superman was Superman like, loves to fart. Like, yeah. Who it's wouldn't? The, it's the most human thing you can do. That's right. He's like, I can't name another species in the in the, the universe who farts. What are you talking about? All animals do. Yeah, dogs what? do. Cats do. Yeah, cows. It what? actually causes a major greenhouse gas issue. It's an entire Earth experience. Pigs, hippos. Yeah. And I, and I want to be of this place. Oh, I see. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you moved the goalpost there, Clark. <laughs> Not only that, but it really gives me a nice boost when I'm flying around. That's true. Spider-Man drops off the pictures. He gets the, the contract and then immediately runs to Madam Webb's bedside at the hospital. Um, there were police and stuff. They're, they're kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, who, you can't go up there. You don't know her. And so he like sneaks in. You know, using uh, press. Powers. Yeah, they're like, get the hell out of here, you vulture. And uh, so, you know, he... Uh, also, when we see Pete, like we see that, like, he's a little worse for wear. He really took a beating. Yeah. On his way to... Uh, well, I mean, the, the juggernaut literally just beat him pummeled his face pummeled it's, it's him true. and like walked through a building yeah with him. yeah so pete like leans down to madam webb and he's like hey it's me it's peter parker like i i trapped the juggernaut you're safe and she's like parker i don't know you and he's like doesn't know me and he uh he, he goes to the doctor and the doctor like grapples him because he's like you know, distraught and he goes Shh. hold yourself together son that's right and he goes oh this boy is more muscular than he looks and i'm like say I'm like, what is, what, what, what's that detail for? And it's just to show that, like, you know, Peter he's, Parker looks mild-mannered, but he's, he's, like, he's Spider-Man he, under there. Like, yeah, but at the same time, the doctor's just like, later? what am I'm, I doing later? I, I don't know. Why? I'm also good at my job. Yeah. I can do a quick physical. <laughs> That's right. Cough. <gasps> ah! <laughs> now, cough you know the, again. You know what the problem was? He didn't call her. Right. She doesn't know what he sounds like. No, it's <laughs> that uh, the, the trauma of being separated from the machine 
like messes up her memories and stuff. Oh, oh how great would it be but if she separated from psychic? the machine she yeah. wasn't psychic anymore? Yeah, they it was to, all the machine. They want to imply that because I don't think that the people besides Denny O'Neill like Madame Web. And I think that's why she's like a plot device in this. You don't say. Yeah, hard to believe. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, the doctor explains like, you know, hey man, like maybe her being separated from her life support system messed up her mind. We never, we'll never know. Because the idea I think is that like, they really, really want a very small number of people to know Peter Parker Spider-Man. At this point, 82, they're like a, a handful of people know. Like less than a handful. And this doctor is not one of them. No. Well, and Madam Web can't be one of them. Let's get her off the table. You know, like I don't think anyone really knows. There's like, like at this point, they don't know that Mary Jane knows. Okay. Does Aunt May know? No. Okay. So they're like, this old woman can't know before Aunt May knows. Hell no. If there's gonna be one old woman in his life that knows, that looks like Aunt May, <laughs> it's gonna be the real Aunt. It's gonna May. be Aunt May. That's right. He, so he leaves and he feels like a like a heel. You know, he's like, she asked me to protect her, I couldn't. I looked for justice against Juggernaut and like accidentally end up in some cement. I think I killed him. Right, I may have killed a man today, I don't know. But also, I feel really bad because like, I didn't want her to know I was Spider-Man, but I didn't want it to be like that, you know? So then we cut back to the yacht and it's like this weird kind of somber moment where Black Tom is like, man, like, the law is everywhere, all over the island and like, where is Juggernaut? You know, like he should be here by now. And, well, if he did fall into that cement that I could see like all the cops like congregating around, he'll blast out of there any second, right? Any second. And it just cuts to the cement area being like walled off. Like, no, Black Tom, your friend is effing dead. Like that is the implication of this story. Obviously they're not gonna kill off the Juggernaut, but just the image of Black Tom being like, well, nothing can stop the Juggernaut. He's gonna be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Hoist the as a mast. <laughs> so this is a yacht. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> let's just leave. <laughs> Put it in drive, I guess, or whatever. But yeah, it's really like, it's this weird somber moment where like, we're supposed to feel bad for Black Tom because he's been separated from his friend and his friend might be dead. I'm like, what? I don't feel bad for you, Black Tom. I don't care about I either don't, of you. I don't Never has there been such a bromance. Exactly, then Black As Tom Black and Tom Juggernaut. Black Tom and Juggernaut. That's right. Such a weird moment to end it on, but I do love it because it's just like, yeah. Like, Spider-Man did get the upper hand on you, Juggernaut. And, uh... A man was arrested today trying to beat a concrete foundation with a wooden <laughs> stick. That's right. Come on, Kane! Climb out of there! <laughs> uh, sir? Uh... You okay? Get out of here, man. Move along. <laughs> Go to the soup kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Renaissance Fair is in tuxedo. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a bleeding whatever the hell you'd call it. Oh, of course you're not. Hi to tie to tie. How dare you? <laughs> That's me real accent. Would you like some Lucky Charms? This is weird. It's <laughs> this is really weird. It's really weird. This is probably the best Madam Web story because she's barely in it. That's right. And she dies almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, they just take her off the table for a while because they're like, why is she even on the table? Denny, what have you done? Who is this? I mean, she's a plot device. She's there to be a moral reason for Spider-Man to need to stop the Juggernaut. Yeah. Like, oh, the Juggernaut's tearing through town? That's a bad thing. But I know where he's heading. Right. And I know that there's a defenseless old woman there. Yes. My Aunt May! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are moments where he's like, I've let her down. Like Gwen and her Aunt May or Captain Stacy or Uncle Ben. Yeah. And so, you know, it, yes, there's a significant amount of collateral damage. Who, who's the visitor? <laughs> the it's, visitor it's is- It's in quotes. He's an annoyance. Yeah, you know, there's a visitor that wants to visit or talk with Robbie, and Betty expertly gets him out of there. That's another element of the story. I thought oh, that was going to be a I visitor for the hustle. Yeah, no. he... I am the visitor. <laughs> no, it's not like he's not it's like a character Black Tom or something. It's it's just some guy. No, it's well, just to show but you. But it like, says like visitor. I get so weird because he's annoying. He's he's probably like a like a salesman. Oh, okay, okay. Just a weird way to put it. You know when you like you say to someone you have a visitor? Yeah, it's like, oh well, Robbie had a visitor today. It was some jackass who wanted to sell him insurance. And we know what to do with those people, don't we? I know this isn't collected anywhere, which is why it's in one of these weird sensational Spider-Man collections. In the late 80s, 
there was no title called Sensational Spider-Man. It was Web of, it was spectacular, it was amazing. And so they made these like weird single collections where they were like, here's a couple of stories that people want to read. They weren't really in the business of making trades at the time. So like they'll call it Sensational Spider-Man because there isn't a book called Sensational Spider-Man. Here you go. Uh, there's another Sensational Spider-Man we will do, maybe with this team, because it's Frank Miller's Spider-Man. Ooh. And it heavily features Doctor Strange. Ooh! 2024, it's, it's you know. The year of the juggernaut Black Tom Bromance. Yeah. It's just, Get with it, Tiffany. I don't want to. But also, this is a seminal Spider-Man story. Hmm. Yeah, first appearance of him fighting the Juggernaut. That's hey, right. And he calls him Juggy. Yeah. Subby, Juggy. Thank God he doesn't call him Jugs. <laughs> I would. He's like, hey. Hey. I do like this moment of Spider-Man seeing him coming out of the fire, and he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Yeah, well, he spent all day after a bad night's sleep trying to fight something that can't be stopped. Yeah, I absolutely really like this because Tom's watching the fire go too, and yeah. he's just like, you could survive this. You have to, and Spider-Man's like, he couldn't survive this, right? I like that a lot. Just yeah. these two like commentaries right. on the scene in front of them. And the running commentary of like pro and anti-Juggernaut. Yeah. Meanwhile, Juggernaut's just like, I like Bumblebee, Bumblebee, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on in Juggernaut's <laughs> mind? <laughs> Juggernaut. 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 Spider-Man's trying to stop Juggernaut. What, what? a dupe. <laughs> he will not. Nothing can stop the Juggernaut. juggernaut. <laughs> Look out. I rhyme Juggernaut with not. <laughs> <laughs> nothing can stop the Juggernaut. But and nothing can stop this channel. That's right. Uh, unless you uh, don't like this video, subscribe to the channel. So make sure to do that. We'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. Juggernaut, 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 nothing can stop the juggernaut. Will he stop? Probably not. <laughs> nothing can stop the juggernaut. juggernaut. Look out. Here comes the juggernaut. Yay. <laughs> we did it. We did do it. We totally pulled it off. We, we did. Man, we're great. <laughs> 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 <laughs>